Yes, you. Hi. Namaskaram. Hi. My name is Sara. Sara, yes. Yeah. Um, and I just, I feel like I have a lot of questions I would like to ask you. But I try to find the one that's... You can take your time. It's yes. Um, it's a lot about the feeling of... Uh, feeling the surrender to the soul, or feeling the yes or the no. I can really feel it resonates inside me. Like that's what I try to do all the time. Without it working <laughs> all the time. And I really feel I suffer a lot and have a lot of pain with the thing about making choices and in all things. I use a lot of energy on even feeling, do I want to eat that or that or do that? Or I can feel all these different feelings, but I, I can't feel what's the right thing. I can't feel the yes. And I cannot feel the no. And sometimes when I have made a choice, I get quite sad of making a choice that I don't feel right. And I don't, yeah, yeah. I think, Sarah, it's important for you to first understand what actually is underlying this inability to just choose something and go with it is fear. Fear is the is the main thing that is underlying it. And the question is fear of what? <coughs> what is that fear that people have when they have to make choices or when they have to take decisions? Actually, deep down, underlying that fear, most of the time, is one of the big aberrations that human beings have to deal with. And that aberration is something created by human beings, which is money. It sounds a little strange what I'm saying, but if you start to go deeper and deeper, you will find out that it is always the need for the system to grab the best possible out of life. Whenever you want to grab the best possible out of life, you have greater difficulty in making choices if you were to surrender into a posture of, okay, whatever comes, let it come. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Little bit that, of, you win some, you lose some. The whole system settles down and you're able to make choices more easily. Apart from the surrender to the soul, here I'm talking about even just in the thinking, there is a state in which you have been put, which is the ego, which is the society you've grown up in, which has taught you to want to grab the best possible, wherever possible, give as little as possible and get as much as possible. That's the fundamental posture, which is why there is always this, this the whole system is under attack by the ego. You always have to give as little as possible and take as much as possible. But there is an entirely different way of living which will relieve you instantly from all of that stuff. And that is to see that it is not about what you get, it is only about what you give. If you move into a state where it's not so much about what do I get if I give ten dollars, I have to get at least eleven dollars worth of something. If it's changed around and you say, I give ten dollars and whatever life has to give me for that, I'll get. It is a fundamental change. And if you're ready to make that change, you can make it right now. And just decide, I'm going to relax. Okay, I have to choose between a pumpernickel bread and a, and a wheat bread. It doesn't really matter, just take one of them. And when I'm eating it, I eat it in surrender. 
That is where you can change your life overnight. Because if you go through life plaguing yourself with these choices, it is because you're trying to get the best out of everything. Otherwise, why would you have the problem with the choice? Mm -hmm. And what is underlying trying to get the best out of everything? Give as little as possible and get as much as possible. But if you switch that around, you're free of that. Since everybody wants freedom, that is a way to get the freedom. Imagine, imagine if you were to just say, hey, in this moment when I have to choose between these two breads, basically it's about how I eat it, not about what I take. And that is giving into this system, just how you do it. Or there's a rickshaw man, he wants twenty rupees instead of ten rupees and the fight starts for one hour because of that. I've seen that many people do that, it's such a waste of time and energy. Just either take the rickshaw or just give him the twenty rupees and move on. Mm. Always trying to get as much as possible and give as little as possible is the underlying posture and under that posture is the fear connected with money because that is how the ego controls you, subjugates you, oppresses you, suppresses you into an action so that you're part of that wheel which is feeding society and greedy capital and its machinations. But if you switch out of that mode and you say, and I'm not even talking of surrender to the soul or a spiritual practice, I'm talking about a decision here that I'm just not going to freak out anymore about choices. I'll just take one and if I have to die with it, I'll die with it, but at least I'm not afraid that I've got too little or I've chosen the wrong thing. It's about fear of getting too little, when actually the system should be, if at all, afraid of not having given enough. So just make that decision, it's a choice you can do right now. Next time there's doubt about what toothpaste to buy or what to eat, which plane to take, just say like, as long as I'm kind of okay, it's all good. In one instant you take away the power of the ego and therefore of society and therefore of the greedy capital that is manipulating all of that and you regain your power just by that one decision. And then, and then, if there is the yearning for the truth, then you move into a posture of surrender to the Master, to the Truth, to the Antar Guru, to the Soul, which is the Master of this being, you move into surrender to the Soul and, and try to see if you can feel that impulse impulsing you into action in this life. So you don't even have to choose much anymore, it's just telling you what you have to do. It's, it's not telling you, it doesn't speak to you, it impulses. So you relax down and there's not all that fight to get as much as you can out of life. You know what I mean? Yes, I think I do, yeah. It's, so, yeah, it's, yeah, such, a, yeah. it's such a relief. <sighs> it doesn't really matter if I take the pumpernickel bread with the nuts or the nut bread with the flax seeds. I just take a bread and just... just in surrender and gratitude, just eat it. Oh, there's a rickshaw guy, no, he's trying to cheat me, okay, just take five rupees more. Okay, take ten rupees more, it's all good. But then I believe, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's like it... I can recognize it, but I can also not recognize myself. Slowly, yes. slowly, yeah. gradually, step by step. Yeah. What it's, is underlying this whole thing over here, this, this ness, is fear. I can see it, mm -hmm. it's fear about everything. You're a gorgeous, beautiful young woman who can live this life just with... just with a smile and just move, flow. And there's fear here, why is that fear here? It's because it has been imposed on you in your upbringing by the society in which you live. And you cannot allow this, you have to say no to it at one point. You know? Yeah. 
So whenever you feel even the slightest bit of fear, know that it is ego, know that behind that ego is society, know that behind that society is greedy capital, manipulating everything, step out of its way. And how do you do that? How are you going to step out of the way of fear? You step into surrender. I mean, you have a soul in there, even though you don't know it. It was taken out by religion and put somewhere else. And now spirituality is throwing it back in, it's in there now, connect with it. Whenever there is fear in the system, move to your soul. And I'm not saying this as a... as some pretty sentence in a nice book, it's a real way to live, you know? Yeah, I can see the fear, it's like it is, like it's very much fear for the... very bad feelings I can feel if it feels like a wrong choice, or I did something wrong, or it didn't feel like the right thing. Whatever you did, whatever you did wrong, leave it behind and move forward. It's that religious inheritance of yours that is filling you with guilt because you did this and that, and now go and confess about it and say ten rosaries. This is your inheritance, even if you yourself are not like that, your parents are not like that. It's a religious inheritance that has filled you with this barrier of fear between yourself and your soul. Because you're not even supposed to surrender to the soul, you're supposed to surrender to something out there. Take it back, put it back inside and start surrendering to it. And when you surrender to the soul, then you can love Jesus. I mean, extrapolated now to whatever you want to love. You cannot love Jesus if you don't love the soul, if you don't surrender to the love. And whether it's Jesus, or it's your boyfriend, or it's the dog next door, love is love is love is love is love. And you cannot express it if you don't experience it. And you can only experience it in surrender. You cannot experience love through detachment. When you're detached from this, you're detached from everything. Mm. Yeah. Feel it, it's there, gradually. It doesn't have to happen today, but the knowing that you can bend down to that, it's a very important knowledge to have in your pocket, you know? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes.